Hey, this is Ross with my partner, Bob. We have a show called Worldview Matters. And Ross, as you know, we believe that everything in life is somehow related to how people view the world around them. Our show is available on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. Also available on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Wednesday, the 19th of December. I'm James Spann. A very dynamic storm system is on the way and another one to deal with next week. So a lot of interest in what's going on here. So just sit back, relax, and we'll tell you what's happening. Uh, Some Skycam shots around the network uh, this afternoon. Love those cirrus clouds. That's the uh, Chiha Sky Cam in East Alabama. This cloud's up at about 25,000 feet. Below that, the air is pretty dry for now. There's our Tuscaloosa Sky Cam, very similar sky there in West Alabama. But boy, down at the Gulf Coast, not a cloud in the sky. That's the Sky Cam at the Dauphin Island Sea Lab. What a beautiful day there. Ooh, boy. Don't you know you see something like that in the cold season? You know, somebody's going to be hammered with big snow. Huge trough coming out of the Four Corners region. And that's going to really stir up a big fuss. But our numbers are great today. Look at Alexander City at 70. Everybody else in the 60s feels so nice, but don't get used to it. We're going to turn much colder tomorrow night. In fact, look at the cold air uh, with that storm back in the cold sector. Temperatures at midday are uh, barely out of the single digits. And uh, we're going to feel some of that tomorrow night for sure. Uh, There's a look at the surface uh, analysis at uh, midday today. A 1,000 millibar low is cranking now over the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma. That will be deepening and moving northeast. And, of course, uh, north of that surface low track, we'll have a big snow event. There's the snow now, or at least as of midday. Uh, Denver up into uh, northwest Kansas around Goodland and uh, into Nebraska. And we'll be watching that expanding and rolling northeast. And, of course, it's awfully windy as well as the surface low deepens. And, yep, we've got blizzard warnings for parts of Colorado, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, and Wisconsin. And surrounding that, winter storm warnings in effect. High wind issues uh, for parts of uh, west Texas and west Oklahoma. And uh, wind advisories for much of uh, Tennessee, Mississippi, north Alabama. And that will probably be expanded uh, later this afternoon. We'll see very strong winds tomorrow and Friday, uh, even away from storms, maybe gusting at times to 40 miles an hour. Of course, we're in the warm sector. We're going to be watching the convective initiation tonight. This is the risk as defined by the SPC tonight, a slight risk over much of Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, southern Missouri, west Tennessee. They have put an enhancement in for potential for damaging winds over much of Arkansas, that 30% circle. And then tomorrow, no change in the day two outlook. Uh, They basically got the uh, southern half, maybe the southern two-thirds of Alabama in a risk uh, south of Interstate 20. And we'll uh, get into the specifics here in just a moment. And again, this is the rain for the next seven days, a new product uh, issued by HPC. This carries us through Wednesday morning of next week, showing potential rain amounts of two and a half inches here and Uh, Certainly, I'd believe that with these two dynamic systems, the one tomorrow and the one we'll deal with next week. All right, let's talk about the uh, first system. This is the GFS, the Global Forecast System, valid at noon tomorrow. This is the 12Z run. This is at 500 millibars, about 18,000 feet off the ground. And needless to say, we will have large-scale ascent, upward air motion with that trough. Surface load near Chicago, 984 millibars. It'll be a blizzard indeed for parts of Iowa and Wisconsin. And, of course, you can see the trailing batch of storms and the very cold air blowing in behind that. Uh, This is the high-resolution 4-kilometer NAM valid at 9 o'clock local time tomorrow. And, uh, again, it's got the uh, back edge of the squall line coming through the shoals. And then by 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, uh, the showers and storms are mostly south of Interstate 20 and east of I-65. And they will be exiting the state by late afternoon. So for us, in this part of Alabama, the better chance of showers and storms tomorrow morning. No real change in our thinking. All the new guidance is in. Consistency is good. This is the projected instability in the form of the lifted index. And to have surface-based instability, you need to see green colors. That's where the lifted index is below zero. And you've got some, but it's basically over the southern half of the state. That kind of pretty much jives up with that SPC outlook. Uh, There is no real surface-based instability for the northern counties, and that is a huge limiting factor for severe weather. Of course, the shear numbers are extremely high. 
This is the uh, bulk shear from the surface to 925 millibars, uh, and those uh, values are uh, over 40 knots. So as we've talked about, even with this low top line of convection, probably no lightning with this. We'll have to watch for any little small spin-up tornado that might try and get down for a few minutes. Uh, those are almost impossible to warn for. Um, and this is one thing to note. This is the surface wind field at 850 millibars. This is 5,000 feet off the ground. Look at those winds. They are howling 70 knots uh, from about Huntsville North. And it's not going to take much to get that transferred down to the surface. And that's another reason I'm saying even away from storms, it's going to be a very windy day tomorrow. Uh, we'll see uh, winds veering into the west, averaging 15 to 30, maybe gusting as high as 40. So that's the deal tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, we turn much colder. Friday will be a cold, windy, sunny. Uh, the uh, GFS is showing a high of 49, which is exactly what we have in our forecast. We'll start the day in the 20s Friday morning. And keep in mind, that air is coming over a huge snowpack. So it's not going to modify much. So Friday, a windy and cold day, but a sunny day. Saturday, as we start the weekend, we go back in the 20s to start the day. The high Saturday should be in the uh, mid-50s. The sky will be sunny, and Sunday looks good. Partly sunny with a high at or maybe just over 60. All right, Christmas fans, let's check it out. This is Christmas Eve, Monday, December 24th. And, uh, again, we have seen modeled madness. The general idea, you know, is kind of set, but the specifics, once, once we get this thing out of here tomorrow night, we can really focus on this, but we'll walk you through it anyway. Down below that, we've got rain breaking out in the warm air advection pattern, a warm front probably south of here. Uh, so Monday looks cloudy and showery and a high maybe in the low 60s, but, but nothing really heavy. Um, now, this is Christmas Day, uh, Tuesday, December 25th. A warm front is clearly beginning to work its way north. you got a surface low near Lake Texoma. That's the Texas-Oklahoma border. And that warm front is pushing a batch of showers in through here. And high should be in the middle 60s if this is right. Snow, forget it. Now, no white Christmas here. But <coughs> that does look like a snowy Christmas day for uh, much of Kansas and Nebraska and Colorado. If this is the right solution, and that's a big if. Look at Tuesday night, uh, Christmas night. Uh, that uh, surface low is near Cape Girardeau, Missouri, 991 millibars with a batch of strong storms. We'd be in the warm sector. Warm front is well north of here. And if this is right, that would be a severe weather look for Christmas night or maybe early Wednesday morning. And then on Wednesday, a very deep trough comes in. Storms kick out by midday. Uh, but we have seen looks all over the board. There is no consistency. There is no confidence in this solution. But if by chance this was right, we might see a rough round of severe weather Christmas night or early the next day. Uh, and then on the 27th, this is Thursday of uh, next week, yeah, it's cool but not really cold. All right, now let's look at the uh, European. It has done very well this season and this year and the in this three to seven day time frame, the medium range, this is uh, Monday evening at six o'clock local time. We've got a batch of showers coming in here. Again, nothing heavy. Uh, and this would really, you can see that the break in those systems, and this would kind of suggest Christmas Day would be dry, but look at Wednesday on the European. Uh, it's got a very deep surface low on the Ohio River. It's southwest of Cincinnati with a really strong batch of storms blowing in here. Uh, on Wednesday of next week. So now both models are showing another severe weather look. You know, it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. It'll change again. We've got, let's just wait until tomorrow night. But now we're getting evidence of maybe severe weather from both models. The timing is different. And then on uh, Thursday, it's much colder, but not as cold as recent runs. The 540 line is, you know, near Montgomery. Uh, but I do think a sharp change to colder weather is likely uh, toward the uh, latter part of uh, next week. All right, uh, let's look at the uh, new year. What do you say? This is January 2nd. Back to the GFS. It's suggesting maybe a, a rain type setup there. And on the 4th, that would be uh, cool and dry, nothing out of the ordinary. But again, resolving specific details far in advance, you know it's impossible to do in this active pattern. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this afternoon. I'll have notes on the blog. Next video here by tomorrow morning at 7. And if you can, uh, watch us on ABC 3340 on the live stream or the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10. I'll be at Legacy Barbecue and Hoover on Highway 150 at 4, 5, and 6 as we wrap up our big Toys for Tots marathon this evening. Uh, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day. 
great evening and God bless. Who's got time to listen to boring radio shows? If you're going to listen to something, listen to something good like eavesdrop. My favorite thing about Christmas is not the presents. No. And it's not the million no. Christmas parties. And it's not playing Dirty Santa. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's it's about relationships. relationships. I know. I know exactly where you're going it, with that. Yeah. It, it just is. It is. And take the time. What if this is your last Christmas yeah. and you never know? Just talking it up. They may use the name Jesus in a terrible way when they hit their thumb with a, you know, <laughs> with a with a hammer by accident on right. Saturday afternoon when they're working on their car. But don't bring Jesus into a song and give him a beer. That ain't right. Yeah, hey, I know a few <laughs> of those folks myself. Bama Talk Show. But before we head for the Dome, we got business to take care of at home. So making plans for the throwdown in downtown Atlanta, we'll have to wait until that post-game rammer jammer rings in the postseason for Bama and the offseason for the barn. Auburn unleashed. That magical score that that Auburn fans remember, 17-16, came out of that game. And Bill Newton was responsible for for the chant, punt, Bama, punt. Bill, thank you for joining us. Uh, good afternoon, Adam. I appreciate y'all having me as uh, the first guest on your show. Worldview matters. And, you know, we've been talking about a number of things. Last couple of times we talked about socialism. We moved from Islam to socialism, and we were going to continue today to do the same thing. But a lot of things have happened in the world in the past 10 days. Uh, it's oh, yeah. heated up again in, in, in Israel. So I thought it would be a good uh, chance for us to talk about some of the things that relate to worldview as it relates to the Israeli situation and Egypt and all that's going on in the Middle East. High School Heroes. And the plane goes right through the bl- bridge and doesn't catch on fire. It's tons of stuff, man. Uh, tons of unrealistic stuff, but hey, it was really cool, actually. Warning, any of these shows can be addictive and they are all fun. Listen on iTunes, Stitcher, your favorite podcast app, or on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com.